Hey, good afternoon. It's Sabine. It is the 4th of March, and here before you see the article I just published, Arising from the Waters. Speaking of the beloved, the first fruits of the Lord, his first harvest, and they are just like Venus about to arise above the waterline. And I believe we're going to be able to have a more clear view um, at not just the scriptures, but the heavens as well. Just like when you are underwater looking up, it's a little bit blurry, but as soon as our faces break the waterline, the view of the heavens becomes more clear. That's what I hope and pray that the Lord will give us clear uh, a clear sight, but also insight into his declarations in the heavens in alignment with scripture. So on the two week overview for the coming two weeks on the calendar, you will find all the prophetic markers and the special signs um, that strike me as interesting and relevant. So you have everything in one view. And tonight we have a midnight marker on the heavenly blackboard of Comet K2 in the constellation Orologium. It's going to align with the midnight uh, point on the pendulum clock, pointing forward, as I understand it, to judgment coming, but it's also related to the midnight call to the bride. And then from tomorrow onward, the E3 comet, which we have been following for quite some time, is going to be visible at the ninth hour position as seen from the belt stars of Orion. And the central or the brightest star, El Nitak in the belt, which is a reflection of the Ephesian six armor, it's also the celestial mirror of the Giza plateau. And we know that the Khufu pyramid is the central pyramid with, with regard to it being the standard of measurement, but it's also a, it also functioned as an astronomical clock. So from that center point of the belt stars of Orion, E3 is going to be aligned with uh, the belt stars from the 4th until the 8th. And that's going to be the ninth hour marker, counting from sunrise at about 6, just after 6. And of course, that points to the Lord's finished work on the cross and then the commemoration of the fast of Et Esther prior to the celebration or the commemoration of Purim in the palace and um, Shushan Purim meaning outside of the palace so as mentioned, all the references in the text um, are found on the calendar in addition to the symbol so you can easily find what you read in the text on the calendar. So of course, after the beautiful heavenly kiss of Venus and Jupiter, their story is not ending, it is continuing. And the overcoming bride, the first fruits of the Lord are going to arise out of the water. There's going to be a cutting of ribbons of uh, the horizontal fish first and then of the vertical fish before Venus enters into the throne room, which is going to have a beautiful meaning for the Lord's overcoming believers. For the entry into the throne room of the beloved synchronizes with the rapture scene in Revelation 4.1, where John, also a type of the beloved apostle, the beloved disciple, enters into the throne room, falls face down at the onlook of the Lord with hair as white as wool, just like the lamb in the constellation of Aries. Perm itself on the calendar serves as an early Passover. In this case, it was for the exiled in Babylon. So the uh, connection to Esther as a type of, over, of the overcoming bride, the intercession she did on behalf of her people, but also to strengthen her king as a co-ruler, respectful of his laws, but, but abiding by the laws of God. Um, there is a lot to glean and to learn from this beautiful story. And this is what I've written about it. I believe this was last year. And um, Parim, uh, currently, if you look at how that is celebrated in the state of Israel, there is a lot of drunkenness and carousing, which could be referred to 
in Luke 21, 34, and Jesus warned us about not to be uh, connected to, um, tied to the world and to this type of uh, idolatry and lascivious celebration. So this could be the feast that is going to be turned into mourning. The heavenly declarations. First, the E3 comet hit its writing on the heavenly blackboard. It will align with Orion's belt stars at the ninth hour position from March 4 to 8th. So that covers the time frame of Purim. Our attention being directed to the Lord's finished work on the cross, but also of darkness falling between noon and three. So the Lord's arrival amidst darkness is what I believe the picture is we are to be mindful of. And um, there is a lot of information about what the meaning is of the constellation. Orion, the son of man coming in his left hand, he holds the remains of the enemy. And he presents that to the congregated believers in the seven churches in the constellation Taurus as a sign of him overcoming the enemy on our behalf. Underneath his feet is the serpent and out of his belt stars flows the river of the judge, the river of the ruler. And that's what the comet is going to um, be positioned in so it has entered into the constellation of Eridanus and it's going to align with Orion's belt stars. There was a beautiful prophetic word from uh, our sister Mandy Ralph, the Lord speaking and emphasizing Purim but also saying to us through her that he is coming at the ninth hour. So this is an interesting and I believe um, also an important ninth hour marker in the heavens. Then the comet will align with Eridanus, which is the fiery river of judgment. And that is going to take place on March 11th exactly. So it's going to cross that asterism line of the fiery river in the heavens. Here you can read where you can find the references in scripture to this fiery river. And it uh, speaks of the Lord overcoming his enemies. E3 will then line up with the great Orion Nebula, the sword of truth, which is underneath the belt stars. And that speaks of the light breaking forth amidst spiritual darkness. So first we have the spiritual darkness, the finished work on the cross. Then we have the comet aligning with the sword of truth or the sword of the spirit. Speaking of light shining and breaking forth amidst darkness. And Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2, we've spoken about that quite a few times, um, comes to mind. The comet is going to align with the star cursa, meaning the chair or footstool of the central one in Arabic. The bent down in Hebrew pointing to the bending down of the enemy of Cetus, which has its front uh, legs into the river. is going to be subdued by the Lord. Psalm 110 speaks of the Lord sitting on his throne and at his uh, right hand the bridal overcomers are situated and he is speaking to them that he is going to make thine enemies our enemies his footstool so that is a very promising scripture the Orion Nebula presenting us with the light of the world so here we have the constellation Orion with the remains of the enemy <laughs> In his left hand, he has overcome. He is raising his arm of strength and his feet are above a serpent. It's now uh, depicted as a hare, but biblically it used to be a serpent. There is uh, footage of that in the overview. Comet E3 has entered the constellation Eridanus, the fiery river of the judge. And it's going to align with the belt stars of Orion from 4 to 8 and then further southward with the sword of truth or the sword of the spirit, the great Orion Nebula. So we're going to go through these images. Um, this is a, an interesting one because the Giza Plateau 
the central Khufu pyramid in its heydays when it was covered with 144,000 white casing stones, it, it reflected the sunlight on the plateau. And there is a source where can, you can see at these different reflections, but what is um, to me was amazingly beautiful and interesting prophetically as well. But I think the beauty is just, um, how do you say that? To me, it's outstanding that at the time that we are currently in, the end of February, early March, reflection of the then Giza pyramid reflected the Lord's finished work on the cross. So the uh, reflections of the sun uh, marked the finished work on the cross. So if you'd like to read more about that, you can click on the links in the article. So a couple of the uh, ancient depictions of Orion overcoming the enemy. He either holds um, like a lion's skin, sometimes a lion's head or a shield. He is uh, standing on the snake. So he has overcome the enemy in all its manifestations. Out of his belt flow uh, waters, which is the depiction of the Nile River, uh, which was adjacent to the Giza Pyramid. The enemy, Cetus, has its feet in the river. He is going to be subject to the fiery river of the judge. So this has a dual meaning of then vitalized water, and now it's about subduing his enemies. The comet in the central line of the river, March 11th, and the um, alignment with the sword of truth from the 16th onwards, from the 16th until the 22nd. And right in between the Comet E3 and the uh, Great Orion Nebula is the star Cursor, where the river is bent. And in Arabic, this was the chair and footstool of the Great One. So, hence the reference to uh, Psalm uh, 110, where the Lord spoke of him making our enemies his footstool. Then the alignment today of Venus with the door star of Pisces, Delta Piscium, the door of the horizontal fish and what the meaning is toward us. The midnight marker of Comet K2 Pen stars uh, tonight and tomorrow in the constellation Horologium. We're going to see the visuals a little bit later. I expect waves to start rising um, as soon as Triton, one of the moons of Neptune, and Neptune itself enters into the constellation Pisces. The association with the trident and the first beast from the sea, I believe to be Barack Obama. But also uh, remember that the nation of Ukraine and the conflict in the, in the Ukraine is described in the passage in scripture about the valley of Jehoshaphat that the Lord is pulling all these nations toward. That is also associated with a yellow or a golden trident. Jupiter um, is going to align with the door star in Pisces on March the 6th. And then of course the full moon, the full worm moon of, the, of Purim in the constellation Leo at the hind legs, uh, commemorating or resonating with Genesis 49, 9 to 11, the scepter not departing from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, and unto him shall the gathering or the obedience of the people be. So the moon is a type of a faithful witness, but also a lawgiver, a co-lawgiver with the Lord, and her fullness is going to be at the hind legs, so she is still in between the feet of Leo. Then she will approach the Alpha Omega point on the ecliptic, underneath the constellation where the man-child is hidden, in Coma Bernices. Leo is the final chapter on the ecliptic, and in Virgo, a new one commences. And then there is a beautiful hidden meaning of the Tola worm connected to this full moon, the full worm moon of self-sacrifice um, and Jesus comparing himself to this Tola worm dying on a tree on our behalf 
bringing forth crimson red blood and then it becoming white as snow.